Welcome everyone to the August 17th Hadley Tri Board meeting. So it looks like we have some uh, technical programming issues this evening, so um, this meeting is not being aired live. Um, so right now we have uh, the select board is here, or the, the majority of us. Um, we have representatives from the finance committee and no one yet from the school committee. So. Can you call the by board now? Uh, by, by board. Yeah, yep. by board, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Hey, hi, Donald. Um, so this evening, the, the focus of the tri-board meeting is to discuss the preliminary budget to actuals to see how we closed out or how it looks like we're going to close out um, fiscal year 2016. Um, David Nixon has also prepared a service delivery plan, which is something that um, is an essential uh, talking point uh, to support the five-year projection as well as a, a long-range plan. Um, and we also have some information about a projection on our long-term debt and was hoping that we could talk about having a public forum and perhaps setting a date for that um, where we would be presenting information to anyone in town interested about uh, kind of the state of state of the union of the town of Hadley so that is our agenda for the evening um, so does it make sense to start with uh, maybe the budget to actuals and then get into the delivery plan, David? Certainly, I'd be happy to do that. And there's a supplemental information as well, so we can take this in a number of different directions. Uh, I was asked to give a, uh, a summary, and thanks to the uh, accounting uh, people for doing such a fine job with the, with the visual presentation. I was asked to um, make a, uh, give a presentation concerning where we ended up at the end of fiscal year 2016. That would have been the year that ended on June 30th, 2016. Uh, and um, we have preliminary numbers here. I hope that you do regard these as preliminary. There's uh, information that uh, I have some questions about. I'm not sure that all, all the reconciliation has happened. But in broad strokes, I think this paints a picture of where we've ended up. So taking the first one is our receipts, uh, what we budgeted for, uh, and what, we, uh, uh, what our actual receipts were. We budgeted f f uh, just shy of uh, $15 million, and the number is 14,981,832, and we brought in slightly more than that of $15,000,000. $88,140. That's a net gain of $106,306. Um, so we, you know, the good news is that we made more money than we thought we would. That builds free cash. Uh, certainly helps us out and it helps us with our projections uh, looking forward over the next five years. Uh, we can adjust some of our revenue streams to uh, reflect our uh, little bit more realistic goals. <laughs> David, one of the, the key points um, in the receipts side of things is that for special assessments, which looks like it's the PBTA, yes. there was a doubling up of payments. So the dollar figure that we're showing for actual receipts will be about half next year, correct? Right. Yeah, so that was one of the questions that we had on that particular line item is mm -hmm. that, uh, why, why did that line jump? because that's typically a line that's uh, very predictable. We get a statement at the beginning of the year. We were able to use that as a budget mm -hmm. figure. The numbers usually come in that uh, the same way. The one thing that might have changed that would have been a change of roots or a change in ridership profile. Well, he, he actually explained it down below in the footnote. Yeah. He, he's, he's saying flat out that the June payment was received in July of FY16, right? So it was right. a timing problem. Mm -hmm. So last year was understated and this year's overstated. So it'll go back again. And some of the red marks that we have there, do we have any uh, information regarding them, why we missed the, sh the shots? I thought real estate we were doing tremendous this year and the collection on it, and I see we're down about 75,000. Right. Well, 75,000 is, is uh, exceptionally well. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. You know, just, just to be aware, but uh, I did meet briefly with the town collector and she's on she's on training right now so we weren't ha able to have a very long conversation but she thinks that the number is actually closer to 60,000 um, 
and the, the missing information is the prior year's payment of real estate uh, and personal property, which I think that number is $111,000. So that right here, the shortfall of $75,000 would be offset by a positive balance of $111,000. So again, we want to track the, all of these numbers down with people away on vacation and away on professional development. Our uh, pilot's pretty consistent too. I was a little surprised to see that one down as well. Which one? The pilot. Pilot. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the last one is uh, state aid from the Commonwealth. So we, we were, we missed our cherry sheet by 48,000. Mm -hmm. okay. on, on the receipt side. I understand. Side. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What was the reasoning behind the fines and forfeitures? Didn't we go out as much and do in speeding details and things? That's why it's 17,000 less. It looks like people are complying more. Maybe the sign board works. Maybe. Could be. I hope so. Uh, turning the page over, the next one is the budget to actual for expenditures. And it uh, shows that the town in whole turned back something on the order of $500,000. Uh, we, we were supposed to spend $15,889,000. Eight sixty, and we ended up spending fifteen million uh, three oh six four seventeen for a net of uh, five eighty three four forty four. Again, this is a this is a good thing that we budgeted, uh, and we were able to control that budget. Uh, the surplus goes towards building free cash. So these two numbers, I don't want to say that we combine them and that's your free cash number there's additional things that go in and go out of free cash but it shows that we're somewhere in the neighborhood of five hundred thousand dollars as an estimate for free cash as of right now could you give the reasoning behind the health insurance the reason why we saved one hundred and eight thousand dollars there because yeah. that's the biggest area of health health insurance is one of the hardest budgets to forecast because the health insurance uh, fiscal year does not line up with the uh, town's fiscal year. Their, fis their fiscal year goes from April until the end of March. So there's a three month period where, uh, our, where we do not overlap. So uh, we also have three dynamics within the healthcare system that affects the budget. Uh, one is the number of, um, of um, life-changing choices having to do with health care that uh, drive health care costs. So a family having a baby, uh, that will increase the amount of health care costs that the town will have to share. So that happens throughout the year. <coughs> then the other is the open enrollment in February, where everybody has an opportunity to change their health care plan. And we simply don't know what that, what that looks like some years. It can be very active in other years. It can be very stable. And then there's that outline three months of the end, back end of the fiscal year where we don't know what the rates are going to be because they haven't been set and there's no way for us to know. So we tend to be conservative with respect to this budget um, because there are too many unknowns. The, the change in health care plans because of qualifying events, the open enrollment period, and then those last three months of the fiscal year. This year we didn't have much activity, and so we have a short, uh, we have a gain <coughs> of $100,000 that uh, we can, we can do two things. First of all, we can use that money to build our free cash, <coughs> but we can also reset the base for calculating the fiscal year 17 health care costs. So if we think that we're flying a little high there, we can pull that back a little bit at the special town meeting. Mm -hmm. We want to take a careful look at that, think about the, de the demographic uh, trends, particularly having to do with the, uh, the teacher population. Uh, but there's an opportunity there. We will be looking at it very closely. David, um, just from a uh, technology standpoint, could I bother you to write down the town hall Wi-Fi password so Joyce can get in? Um, she lost her Wi-Fi connection. Um, or Jennifer probably knows it. We don't want to say it out loud on TV. So. Right. <coughs> I can't get in, Jen. She just needs the password for Wi-Fi. So. so, David, I mean, in your mind, looking at these, um, 
it seems like that that healthcare line item is likely the only one that would cause us to readdress what has been voted for FY17. I mean, if I was on town meeting floor right now and I heard, oh, we're off half a million dollars, I'd certainly be saying, well, wait a minute. You know, mm -hmm. if you base next year's on this, are we way off? Well, we but haven't funded OPEB yet, have we? No, no. Okay, so I mean, at this point in time, we're but also these aren't likely Understood. like like the police and fire again there were circumstances that caused these that mm -hmm. are not going to carry over into fy17 mm -hmm. right so right. Okay. so i think we're going to want to make sure that we're really clear on that when we do go into absolutely as I said, it's an opportunity and given the numbers that i ran today uh, <laughs> you know wherever we can save a dollar that will be only to the good okay can I make one more comment? Of course. You know, I'm very pleased all the departments in town, uh, no one end up in a negative. Mm -hmm. No one in. I commend the Finance Committee for working with all the departments on a yearly basis. Here, here. To mm -hmm. come out that way, everybody's done a great job. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Donald. So, okay, any, any other, you have questions about the? Well, I think that surplus is going to evaporate in October. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, then, okay, thanks. So, David, you just said you had the opportunity to update the mm -hmm. so, projection. So, we, um, we do a five year projection. We do that uh, typically in August, and here we are. Uh, I took the most recent information from the uh, final cherry sheet that uh, was signed by the, uh, the legislature. Um, I also had a chance to review the, uh, the, new, new, the new new growth figures as well as make the adjustments for the lost revenue from the medical marijuana facility. Um, the bottom line is, is that we're still pretty much in the same place as we were at the end of uh, the annual town meeting. We knew we needed about $120,000 in order to close the gap or about $124,000 even with all the adjustments from the, uh, the, the cherry sheet and the, the lost revenue. Mm -hmm. um, the lost revenue is substantial. Uh, we have a community impact agreement for $50,000 a year. That means over a five year period, just that lost revenue is uh, a quarter of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, uh, Board of Health fees that would have amounted to a minimum of $14,000 per year. So that's a $70,000 loss over a five-year period. Uh, we have other uh, other fees that uh, are associated with inspections, uh, with building permits, electrical permits, uh, sewer impact fees, sealer of weights and measures. I didn't bother to tally what that yeah. impact was. Uh, but the other uh, uh, opportunity that we should keep in mind is November 8th, there's very likely to be a ballot question having to do with the recreational marijuana. Uh, and whether it gets approved or not, I don't know, but in the community impact statement, we had a reopener of the agreement, should that come to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's an opportunity for revenue at that point. Uh, so that's, that's where we are. But even taking that, that money off the table, now and for the future uh, we didn't really change our stance with respect to where we are now. Looking forward into the next few years, we see a lot of red ink at the end of the, at the, end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, this is obviously is something we want to pay a lot of attention to and make decisions about how we're going to uh, address the potential shortfall moving forward. And not just shortfalls address the things that we're not doing that perhaps we need to be doing. Yes. That aren't even reflected in here. Mm -hmm. So um, we should take a, a look at this and go through mm -hmm. again with the changes that you've made. Happy to answer any questions people may have. Um, one of the I uh, no, he just handed this out. Actually, Jennifer, do you have another? Which one, please? The five-year projection for Joyce. Okay. Down, okay. Do Down. I don't think I have that either. Okay, I've got one now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. 
Terry wants one. Okay. Um, one of the other things to note too, uh, just we had a, a little bit of a, a sidebar conversation about this, but um, in looking at the state aid, I also want to take a look at the um, the school choice. I mean, one of the things we track is. We, we know what the school is coming forward with uh, and we know the story there that um, you know the lion's share certainly is coming from the uh, local contribution the town line item which is about according to the pie chart here's about 42 percent of the operating budget just for the schools operating that doesn't include all of the benefits and the like um, and then they have school choice money coming in and they have uh, grant money potentially so those those are really their primary funding sources for the schools and the other conversation piece has um, always been well, either the state assessment side of it um, and a portion of the state receipts runs through the cherry sheet which goes through the town books and the net outflow relative to sending charter tuition and uh, sending school choice tuition We've been running about a $300,000 deficit um, for the past few years. So meaning that the dollars associated with children opting out of the district um, is costing the town now about $300,000. And that's, that's with the school department having made a yeoman's effort at bringing in as many school choice kids as possible. So we do see the school choice tuition uh, receiving tuition that they're using to fund their budget going up significantly but it's not it's not keeping pace with the um, the charter and and school choice opt-outs that could be broken down a little bit more because all you have is, is, it, is an education line with their bottom line there's not anything in there for school choice or Smith school or right and um, that's that's because it's all on that cherry sheet so okay. I actually I mean just on my own I did a little scheduled today because I was trying to figure out what was going on uh -huh. but um, on the state website they have a five-year actually longer than that but a seven-year history of the cherry sheet assessments uh -huh. so you can see you know what's happening in that um, maybe uh -huh. should send that around for material for for people to look at uh -huh. but you can see the story I mean it's just yeah. It's going in the wrong direction, and that's something that's not. As long as we're participating in the school <laughs> choice program, we can't control that. The schools can't control that. So. And I think we should be aware now that Ch Chinese Emergent School is a full K through 12 school mm -hmm. now. Right. Well, and and actually, if you look at that charter sending tuition, because that's a charter school, you can see that charter tuition tracking right along with the success, if I can put it that way, of the immersion school. So as they added grades, um, that many more kids were were opting into that. Yeah, Zillow rates, uh, and if you want realtor.com, mm -hmm. the rates of the Chinese immersion school is a nine. And Hopkins is a six, and the elementary school is a four. Really? Okay. So uh, to, to support what you're saying, there's a ch uh, chart on state aid uh, in your uh, package. Mm -hmm. which shows state aid uh, in actual dollars as well as state aid in terms of constant dollars or uh, inflation-adjusted dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and it bears out what Molly is saying, that you can see state aid hitting a peak around fiscal year 2009. The bottom drops out of the market, and we see it's a sharp decline until about 2012. Uh, you see a small recovery at that point, but then you see these steep declines again afterwards. That those steep declines are driven by our charter and choice assessments. Mm -hmm. Something else of interest is the ball fields that they're projecting and CPA money mm -hmm. that they're requesting. And I understand now the CPA, if they give them the money, they're going to request that their community fields which is a big difference than being school fields where park and rec would have their right to use them just as much as the school. Yeah, that that was the conversation honestly all along. All along um, I mean that the C, that was the position the CPA committee took from the very beginning what back when um, Joe Fitzgibbons was was the chair. Okay. Um, and it was a question of was there any way to um, have the schools 
you know, effectively be uh, kind of the primary controller of the fields, but recognizing that Park and Rec utilizes a lot of them. So, I mean, it, there, there was definitely going to be a governance issue, and um, I think that they were hopeful that they could find a way to work that out that would satisfy the CPA requirements. So it sounds like, Donald, you're saying that that's still... Well, it's still up in the air, up I the believe, air. a little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, they had a meeting last night, apparently. Okay. Um, so, David, do you want to um, uh, go through the service delivery plan, then? I think the service delivery plan, as well as the SWOT analysis, should eliminate the uh, broad themes that uh, we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, that's the budget. That's the service delivery plan. What we've identified in the SWOT analysis broadly is uh, issues of staffing, uh, productivity, finances, um, long-range goals, and, and, and objectives, uh, things of that sort. They're expressed in different ways in different departments, but we're really talking about how well, I, the way I see it is that we're a small town and we want to maintain our small town uh, character. Mm -hmm. But we're really facing the challenges and the, in some cases the opportunities of a much larger town. Uh, and so how do we meet those public service needs and take advantage of those public service opportunities but remain a small town? I think the same old, same old is not the way to do it. I, I think that the SWOT analysis and the service delivery plan provide the basis for making decisions about where you as elected officials want to see the town in the next five years. What do you want? What's what's important to the community? Uh, service delivery plan, just to touch on it very briefly, um, it divides the, t it looks at the entire town and then divides the town into the various functions or uh, based upon the budget and departments. Uh, each each section has a mission statement, a statement of purpose, and it has a legal mandate. Why is, why is this department or function in place? What are the legal underpinnings of it? An organizational structure and a description of the major functions that uh, occur within this department. And I think immediately it comes clear that we have a decentralized decision-making process. We have the voters who perform uh, the function of the legislative body, but they also appoint many of your uh, key staff uh, elected officials that are ch in charge of uh, executive decisions, school policy, educational decisions, financial decisions, regulatory decisions. Uh, and if, that's, if that works for you, that's great, but if we want to change any of that, the service delivery plan provides you with some ideas about where we would uh, go in terms of making uh, changes for productivity, purposes, efficiency, effectiveness, streamlining decision-making process, uh, better command and control over some of our larger projects. Uh, in preparing the service delivery plan, I didn't find many places in the uh, layout of the town where I said, huh, isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of those, but uh, those are minor in nature. I think that you have a, a traditional town laid out in the traditional New England open town meeting manner. Uh, it's been around for 350 years. Um, uh, certainly, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but at the same time, you have these challenges that uh, stretch your resources on an annual and daily basis that I think that you can uh, use this plan to uh, get to where you need to go. Okay, so I think the last time we talked a little bit about um, some areas that maybe we should key in on. Um, and I guess the question becomes, is it the appetite of, well, I guess the finance committee, as, as you just said, the by board, since the schools aren't are participating, but is it, um, can we get collective agreement on where some of these issues are? Um, in order to try to determine what resources we may want to apply to coming up with some options or a solution on resolving them. 
So I apologize, I wasn't here the last time we had a tri board meeting. Can you point out the inadequacies that we were specifically addressing? Well, at the last one, uh, having gone through the service delivery plan and the SWOT analyses, yeah. I came up with my own list, um, but had asked other folks to kind of be thinking along the same lines to say, you know, are, are there some, is everybody else coming up with the same, same hit list, so to speak? Um, you know, David just mentioned as a starting point, the government. I mean, is is our form of government working for us right now? Um, you know, should we be thinking about doing something different? And what does that mean? Right now we have the most, as you said, the, the basic form of um, democracy that, that the state allows. But yet the problems in Hadley are also starting to scream or maybe have been screaming for a while about um, professional management in certain areas and I think that and, and we know we've we've made changes the DPW for example was a move in that direction but you know we look at um, we don't have an, an information technology function we don't have uh, a human resource function and we have hundreds of employees I mean what, what organization do you know that has hundreds of employees and there's no HR department right I mean well, does the school run their own HR department they're no. just like us yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. They have outside counsel, but they don't really have an HR. It's like the, well, the principal's in charge of here. Payroll and everything Oh, else. yeah, for employee benefits. All that employee mm -hmm. benefits all come through mm -hmm. here, and Joan and uh, Linda take care of that end of it. Right. But if an employee has an issue, whether they're in the school department or whether they're in, you know, the DPW, the process is the same. You go up through your management team, and then their union may or may not be union representation involved, but then it's outside legal counsel, but there's not a human resource department. Are like towns in the Commonwealth, um, they, they have, do they have um, markedly different types of government? Not the small so, towns, I don't think. So the ones that you run into are uh, representative town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, town oh, council. Okay, so to up, right? Well, town, okay, so Montague, they've got a, uh, three members select board, five, uh, town administrator, representative town meeting. Uh, same with uh, South Hadley, only a five member board of select, uh, selectmen. Um, you can have a town manager council form of government, such as they put together in East Long Meadow just recently. Uh, you can have a mayor uh, council form of government. Uh, that, that would be more expensive. And they can counsel. Mm -hmm. they well, Traditionally, yes. Yeah, I mean, just based I mean, on what they get paid for stipends. Look at it. Uh, looking at the city of Northampton, I think that your mayor is probably getting paid a lot more than your mayor of the city of Greenfield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the councilors are in the thirteen mm -hmm. grand this year too. Right. 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 Times eight or mm -hmm. ten, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but, but again, not not presuming any sort of solution. Just uh, you know, I'm just asking the question: Does anybody feel like the form, the the way that we're structured right now, as David pointed out, this kind of decentralized decision making, and there's some areas where there's really we're not structured for a lot of accountability. I mean, we have X number of elected positions that can really run the the function as they see fit. You know, because they're they're elected, um, they're not reporting to the town administrator, nor are they reporting to the select board. And then it comes down again to finances. Mm -hmm. So, the bigger you make things, the more expensive it's going to be. Um, and I'm not sure that Hadley <laughs> is the place that that's going to happen. To tell you the truth. Yeah. And again, okay. I'm not advocating. Just just. No, and I, I, and I just don't. I don't see where people would appreciate that I think they like the form of government democracy that we have that even though sometimes we have a, a smaller turnout at town meeting at least their people are able to come to town meeting and voice their opinion um, and then certainly on the bigger issues people come out and voice their opinions on those also and it gives everybody an opportunity mm -hmm. I don't think they would per se want an elected person from each uh, Hartsbrook or North Hadley or you know um, you have uh, those several areas. You mean like you a representative town meeting? Representative, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see that happening. Jerry? I think that if we were to look at like-sized towns, whether it's Belchertown, Deerfield, Granby, I think that we 
you know, I think you're, you're going to find that we are probably in line with what most communities mm -hmm. our size have set up. Mm -hmm. So again, the question comes back to, do we have a problem in things being inefficient because of the, the fact that the, this decision making is distributed the way it is because of our form of government? So the form of government may, you know, changing that may not be a solution, but how do we make it well, better than what don't we Don't you think like we talked about, and this is several years ago, that we actually talked about uh, sharing uh, with other small towns um, certain uh, aspects of town government, mm -hmm. uh, human resource or IT. IT and things like that. Veteran where services. Mm -hmm. Veteran services yep. and things mm -hmm. like that that we were already doing in that area. Um, certainly those are the things that we could probably look at with other towns that need the same type of thing that we need. Mm -hmm. Greenfield COG is pretty proactive. It's, in, it's a little different kind of setup, and I know they're a lot more proactive in getting involved with inspection services and things like that, even to be, to do it. So, you know, maybe if, if we could collectively, as a as a community, or talk to other um, towns that are in their community and see what their needs are, and, and if we could come up with those, and then go directly to the COG and say, listen, you know. You know, we, we like these professional services provided by the COG, and if we disperse the money over X amount of towns, mm -hmm. there's a possibility for it to be run more efficiently. Right. And again, Greenfield has a far different COG setup than right. Hampshire County. But just, you know, as a, as a practical example, I mean, I think you have to look at both sides of it. So if we were to say, yeah, we think we need an HR function, and then to hire somebody, it would cost, I'm making this up, um, you know, $65,000 plus employee benefits, right? So it's a $100,000 position. So people would say, oh my gosh, we don't want to spend another $100,000. But then when you look at the time spent dealing internally as best as we can, <laughs> namely the guy at the end of the table, but all of the time that goes into dealing with human resource related issues, I'd bet my bottom dollar we'd find that it would actually save you know, it, it would calculate out ultimately to a savings because there are all of those other things that aren't getting done. Or sometimes, quite frankly, may cost the town actual dollars depending on how things get handled, all, all of that, you know. Um, I'm not opposed to looking at that. I, I, I will open my mind and, and allow that to be brought forward. I just don't understand where the savings would be. So mm -hmm. one, one resource that's available to you is the Mass Municipal Association. They have a whole wing that's devoted to change form of government. Uh, and they will send people out here and give you presentations about you know, the advantages and disadvantages of each form of government, as well as uh, addressing some of the things that are on the table, which is uh, what is the change, they, what is the problem that, that change is going to solve? Is it a structural problem in which case case the form of government change may be called for or is it some sort of functional problem which is not going to be effectively addressed be by changing the form of government. Mm -hmm. I'm inclined to agree with us what we divine. I think most little towns are all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe there is a way of sharing things with the COG and I'm sure the COG would welcome any new revenues that they could enhance from helping all the communities, you know, mm -hmm. so, because mm -hmm. they don't have any real revenue makers over there. They can't raise taxes like we they can. They have the one program and that's, that's it, it. Much. So, yeah. uh, but IT, that may be something just like veteran services we're working in. Grant writing. Grant writing, Another right. shortcoming of most small towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Professional grant writing services. Okay. So at least on, on the select board, does, are, are the select board members in agreement that based on what we've heard over the course of this past year, that the areas of human resources, information technology, grant writing in particular, mm -hmm. is something that is ultimately costing us something, Jerry? Yes, right? absolutely. And it's, I not, it's not working. Mm -hmm. okay. How about the finance committee? I mean, we based have to see what's economically feasible. I mean, uh, you go ahead and say we're going to hire 10 more people mm -hmm. uh, to, to manage the HR issues and mm -hmm. and uh, this and that. I mean, 
uh, any way we can save money to bring more money back into the operating budget, I think, is, what, is the direction we should be looking, not necessarily just increasing the operating budget. Right. Yeah. And so I guess so I guess where I'm trying to go is just to get everybody to agree agree that there's an area of weakness or a problem, and and not jump to the conclusion that yeah, therefore we should hire. Just can can we at least get everybody in agreement that we should explore all of the options yeah. to try to mm -hmm. resolve the issue? I think we should encourage all the departments to be as efficient as they can, and and, and garnish their input, which we already have through the SWAT analysis, right. um, to to try and run as effectively and efficiently as we can going forward. Not that they don't try now, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, any any dollars that we can maintain and recast into a, a different. Uh, area of need is, is well worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Let me let me just. I'm sorry, you were going to say something. On our pie chart tells us where we're spending our money, and mm -hmm. and uh, professionals look at that stuff, and accountants and other people that are involved, and say that you know you say you spend on safety, it costs you X amount of dollars for a town your size. I mean, there's no two towns that are the same. Right. We have Route Nine; it's a lot different than than Hatfield or South Deerfield mm -hmm. or anything like that. But I mean, they come in there and look look at that and try to identify where the opportunities are, where you're spending too much, where you're not spending too much. To have that reviewed uh, on a regular basis, to me, is not a poor plan at all. Yeah. Uh, to bring in some professionals to try to help you out, work with mm -hmm. finance committee, and to understand this is where our costs are. Where is our cost too high? Schools too high? No, they're not too high. Uh, roads too high? No, they're not too high. And they're in line with other like communities. That are around, and I think that just double checks mm -hmm. and makes us more efficient and, and, and runs a better town. Understanding how we stand versus other towns from a completely separate out uh, out person looking at what you do. Mm -hmm. so. so you're talking about Mass Municipal? Yeah. So that that's a resource that's free that can come Get that, that free? is dedicated to okay. this particular problem. <laughs> 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 Pay for it in the end. <laughs> yeah, but one but one thing that occurs to me looking over this uh, the uh, the, SWAT, uh, the service delivery plan with the MS4 uh, requirements looming over our heads is just how spread out we are with respect to being able to address this particular function. So the MS4 is the stormwater permit that uh, we were recently uh, uh, mandated. Uh, by the EPA to uh, address this over the next five years. Um, our stormwater system is managed by the Board of Health. Good evening. Am I the only one here? Oh, okay. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> so our stormwater system is managed by the Board of Health by your own bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, I met with your Board of Health the other day and they were completely unaware that this was part of their, their purview. Mm -hmm. um, the stormwater system is in part regulated also by the planning board and the zoning uh, mm -hmm. um, bylaws. Um, it is the highway department who has no control over the, uh, over the stormwater system that's going to do the heavy lifting on this issue. Um, so this might be one area that the, the form of government that you have currently is not going to work very well for you because to address MS4 uh, in a uh, coordinated way is going to take a lot of co cooperation from many elected officials in order to achieve this particular goal. Um, you're very fortunate that you have a DPW that is willing to take on this burden, but they have absolutely no legal mandate to do so. It's some other elected body that's supposed to be handling this. Um, I've worked, I've talked to them, as I said, the Board of Health, and, you know, they're going to cooperate and we're going to get their signatures when we need to, but they're really, I, I don't know why they're in charge of the stormwater system. I don't know how well, that came about. That so, David, do you think, I mean, is, um, I'm, so we're talking about resources that we want that we don't have and then it can also go the other way we may have resources on staff that have some capacity to potentially you know sh having other towns share with with us that could generate some revenue I mean do you think the first step would be to bring in the mass municipal and, and have them kind of work with you and then make a presentation or would it make sense to have a, a subcommittee 
yeah. form to go through it and then bring in mass well, municipal? Since, I, since I've got a dog in the fight, because they may uh, say the best thing to do is, is change the form of the administrator to a manager or some other form, um, mm -hmm. I think it would be more transparent if uh, there was a subcommittee of the select board who were uh, in charge of that so that uh, mm -hmm. that when the presentation is made and the recommendation is made, then you as the elected officials and the, the constituents that you serve will understand that this is a true uh, recommendation that has not been influenced by someone who has a stake in the, in the game. Okay. You know, earlier on, you indicated that the school department is a major player now. They're almost 50% of the municipal budget. Well, more than that, I think, when you... <coughs> when you add in all the yeah, benefits yeah. and everything. So your idea of them, you know, like having a business manager where he could serve the town, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. IT working with the school. They have an IT person that mm -hmm. could work with the town also. Mm -hmm. And I think there would be a savings there overall instead of hiring two people to do one job like IT. You know, we'd be able to save, especially in the benefit area, you know? Mm -hmm. And to but communicate, intercommunication between the boards and, and the school and us. And I think like MMA may be able to tie that all together and show us in a committee how it all could work possibly in a savings for the town, mm -hmm. which would be great, I think. Yeah. I'd love to speak to a town that has had them come in and, yeah. and, and uh, yeah. done this to see how they feel the project yeah. went. Yeah, they, they have they have uh, a lot of they have a lot of resources mm -hmm. available. Okay. So is is everybody comfortable with at least getting more information about yeah, it? Absolutely. And and then think about um, I I think it probably would make sense again to do a little bit of roll up the sleeves and have a couple of a couple of people just dig through the org charts and talk to David and. You know, and then bring it back, obviously, to the full group. But I know as a board, we're still looking for the third area on the municipal government thing grant. We have two now, right? And they would like you, you can have as many as three. So this, this is the community compact. I yeah. have right. an update for, uh, if you wish, which sure. is that uh, uh, they're going to come out in the next three weeks and start the project uh, with respect to the, uh, the IT part of it. Uh, they're going to have another program roll out, and we're in line for that. Oh, so yeah, that's the good. third one? That's the third one. Okay, okay so good. this wouldn't good. include that. Great. Yeah, good. Yeah. That's an excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we're agreeing agree on that. And that so that would help attack the um, staffing, uh, the, or the, the functional deficit, deficits, if I can put it that way, where we, we have functionality that we aren't currently staffed for look at the opportunity for us to share services with other towns where we would be the service provider. Um, and then also from a revenue standpoint, to Jerry's point, you know, grant writing and that kind of thing would also come into play there as well. Okay. Um, and then another thing that we had a little bit of conversation about is on, on the, the revenue side as well, you know, are there obstacles to new growth? Are there obstacles to us, you know, the, the, the pie is only so big right now, right? And we can see two thirds of it's coming from property tax revenue. Gas moratoriums. Yeah, we're going to be speaking about that later, and I can I agree completely. Yeah. And so, um, any other areas that people have thought of um, in terms of, and actually, I think on Tim, when Tim does his presentation, doesn't he have something on there about looking at some of the uh, the zoning or the bylaw? issues where it may be prohibiting us from mm -hmm. getting additional revenue right and it seems so like that would be a size a restriction on commercial development has been a big chokehold on this town although that is in line with the uh, master plan that was adopted uh, back in 2005 right so maybe that could be a joint effort i would think the planning board and mm -hmm. the select board Maybe could we schedule a meeting with them and, and focus? Let's we'll see what the on that. We'll see what the uh, opportunities are. Mm -hmm. we can From Tim. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. So the planning board is working on an update to the master plan. These things are only good for ten years. Uh, so um, the next uh, uh, the next one is overdue. I know they're working on it. Uh, they're hopefully wrapping up. The select board did have a chance to meet with the uh, consultant for the uh, for the master plan. One of the things that we did raise at that time is that this was perhaps an unintended consequence 
of the uh, of the previous master plan and the zoning bylaws that were paid, passed based upon it that we we cut ourselves off from tax revenue that we perhaps we shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe another area it's time for us to look again. It's sort of like an additional tax on fees and licenses and all that, but we haven't done anything with them for quite a while, I don't think. And we have someone on board now in Jennifer that can do the work for us. And our business in town have a very enviable tax rate. You know, we all, everybody gets charged the same industrial. Uh, agricultural, residential, and commercial. Mm -hmm. That's why Hadley is such an enviable place for businesses mm -hmm. to arrive. Mm -hmm. And this is part of it, I think, you know, uh, fees, and we have to look at that again. Yep. Okay. And, uh, and then another key area we talked uh, touched on briefly last time is the capital plan, mm -hmm. and kind of where we're at with debt and, and interest. Did, right. did you yeah. had some information for us on I that? Do. So we have um, we have a couple of charts that are in your uh, in your package for tonight. Uh, the main thing is looking at the general fund. Uh, the, the general fund uh, shows a steep decline in debt service from fiscal year 2019 to 2021. Uh, there is a drop off of something on the order of $319,000 of annual debt service in that three year period. 319? 319. Annually? Annually. So it goes down to, uh, what, four? Is it the lowest number you can about in 2021? So what that tells us is that we have a we have a, a, a capacity issue uh, in the chart that's in your presentation materials tonight. You'll see that there are two lines. Uh, one is at six percent of net revenue, and the other one is at ten percent of net revenue. Mm -hmm. Between six and ten percent is where your annual debt service should be in order to maintain optimal capital effort. Too much above. 10% and that means you're paying, you're overburdening other services with, uh, with uh, uh, debt payments. And, and David, just tell people where you're getting that. Oh, this uh, number comes from two uh, auditors who uh, reviewed our financial situation and recommended for both the general fund and the enterprise funds the optimal um, level of debt service within each fund in order to demonstrate two things. One is that you're maintaining your effort on the capital front. The other is to show your bond rating agencies that you're, you're credit worthy. And so this is a healthy community that's not going to uh, incur a lot of risk in the future because they're neglecting their capital effort. So for those two reasons, we want to keep our general fund debt service between six and ten percent annually and right now we're below that six percent we're outside of that optimal zone and with the further drop off of debt service in the 19 to 21 we're going to be far below uh, the six six percent so we're working with a capital plan which would bring the debt service to a sustainable level within that optimal zone address our capital needs and uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, make, make some progress on some of the capital back, backlog, particularly having to do with buildings. Uh, the the drop-off of debt service of $319,000 per year is either a lot of large trucks and buses and uh, backhoes and things like that, or it's a building or two. Can we equate what three hundred nineteen thousand dollars a year is to a two percent SRF loan? Something on over a twenty-year period of two percent interest. I'm thinking it's going to be something on the order of four to five million dollars. Rating for the bond is 20 hours every case? It would be under a 2% uh, uh, SRF, so it would be a guaranteed rate of 2%. It all depends on how fast you want to pay off the debt. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, yeah. you, you could actually pay for something in one year with $329,000. That's right. I mean, and have it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. 
uh, versus kicking the, the can down the road and letting future generations pay for it. Yes. But with some of the monumental tasks that are before us, I'm trying to understand what we could uh, uh, absorb without the tax rate going up a single time. Yeah. And, and at what point can we fix we, the absorb? We talked about that a lot. Yeah. You know, trying to maintain the tax rate uh, around a, a gentle slope. Correct. Right. So we're, we're working on the capital plan right now, which we had hoped that we'd be able to present yesterday, but then we got new information in. So um, we're going to present that to you shortly. The capital plan committee will be meeting in order to gear up for the full time meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's going to be critical. I think. Mm -hmm. Just a point of interest, you know, something that was astonishing to me in my travels going around looking at uh, safety complexes. The town of Orange, believe it or not, 48% of their population is in the poverty level. Mm -hmm. They're getting their fire trucks for 5% of the value of the uh, truck from the government because they're in such dire need there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, Hadley is so fortunate. Our per capita <coughs> in town is almost equal with Long Meadow. You know, we have colleges all around us great employment opportunity here and we have an enviable tax rate if this town is clamoring for new buildings and they truly want it I think we have the availability to do it now and it's a great environment to do it in we did it 20 years ago when we built a new elementary school and a new self safety complex at the same time to a tune of almost eight million dollars mm -hmm. And so I think we have the availability to do it again if the will is with the people to do it. What's our bond rating? Uh, double, double A plus standard of course. So we've got about seven minutes remaining for the, the tri board. Um, and I think all of this is leading to a discussion about, um, you know, uh, Donald said, you know, people are clamoring. Um, We've talked about really needing to get in front of the town. So, so right now, obviously, we have the fall town meeting is October 27th. We've committed on October 20th, which is one week before, to a public forum where we will go through all of the warrant articles so people have an opportunity to ask questions, make sure there's clarity around what people are voting for. Um, but that, that forum is specific to the, the warrant articles. You know, we've talked about the possibility of having a public forum that would really be focused on just getting an, an overview of information out there to folks to let everybody know kind of what's on our plate and what we're trying to deal with. And it's um, not that we're holding a town meeting either. This is no, it's not a town this, meeting. This is just informational. So right. I mean, it's not going to be an all-night affair. It's to let yeah. you know that this is what's going to happen the following week. So you know things are to give you that so that when you go to town meeting you have questions for whoever has brought up their articles that you can ask them appropriately what you want to ask them for that it's giving you a fair warning of what's coming right that's the October 20th meeting correct right specific to the warrant articles correct. Um, but then we also talked to in the calendar that we put together we had a placeholder for a public forum which is really just a very general information session not specific to town meeting but specific to the town of Hadley um, kind of a state of the state of the organization here's what the budget looks like we the fact that we have projected deficits going forward here's some of the things that we're not doing here's things that are going really well really you know I think kind of a um, an assimilation of everything that we, we saw in these SWOT analyses, You're not getting into granular issues, but just at a high level for people to ask questions, talk about debt, certain financial ratios, um, to get in people interested in information flowing. And I would still love to see us get something like that scheduled in the latter part of, um, you know, maybe September. I think we have it tentatively scheduled for September 14th. That was a conversation, I think, between you and I. Yeah. But I don't know, you know, again, we wanted to bring it back to the full board to see, you know, does that date work? Are people... Is that because we didn't have a meeting that night? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, clever. Madam Chair, I think, you know, what you said to expound on it, what's generating this is we're constantly, as select board members, asking 
from the general public. What are you doing with all our tax dollars? Mm -hmm. Where does it all go? Where is it being spent? Mm -hmm. What are you spending it on? We want to make a forum that you all can be invited to, and each department will tell you exactly what they're spending on and their future spending needs. And then that question can be eliminated, and we want to give you more information to be able to be a qualified voter when you go to our fall town meeting, understanding all of the Warren articles. Sometimes the information doesn't get back to everybody fast enough and we don't get the information maybe a day or two before the meeting. So we're trying to eliminate that and put everybody on a positive note to understand the Warren articles, to understand the makeup of the fiscal operating budget, and just make the fall town meeting move that much smoother. So, and I think um, if we go ahead and we do that, um, then we want to be sure, obviously, any, any information that's presented at that, at that forum that the department heads, um, you know, have fully vetted it too, so that we're not saying something about the police department that the police chief has no idea that we came to some conclusion, you know. So we would definitely want some lead time to make sure the departments had an opportunity to see um, what we're thinking in terms of the presentation and certainly be there um, would be ideal as well. What were you thinking about having that for? Maybe the senior center, I would think. I don't know. Or maybe Hopkins, but I would think the senior center. In October? September 14th. September. Oh, that one. Yeah. Well, can, can we um, try, does that date work? Is that good? Good? Fine with me. Okay. All right. So let's go with that, and then obviously between now and then we'll be spending more time coming up with the material. Uh, Jeff, did you have something quickly? No. <coughs> In these forums, if you don't have a question and answer, you could tie that up in the town meeting. So I certainly would hope that you make provisions for people to ask any kind of question they want. Yeah, I think that's the point of a forum is, is typically right. going to be it. Yeah. I'm just saying we're not holding a forum. Right. We're not holding a town meeting on debate on whether or not on these well, articles. Question and answer. Exactly. Right. What date was it again? September 14th. But we need to find a venue to Jerry's point, so we'll be working mm -hmm. on and we'll make sure that that gets out on TV5 and, and we get notification out as best we can to the town. Do you have, any huh? just ask it. Do you have any, anything else from the Finance Committee before we close the Tri Board meeting? Uh, no, it's just we were looking for volunteers for one more member. One more member mm -hmm. for Finance? Okay. All right. So if anybody inside? anybody is interested, contact... Brian West. Brian West. Well, or, or you can contact the town via Jennifer. So you can call her or you can call uh, Brian West directly as the town moderator. Okay, good. So I think we're next meeting. Oh, yeah, the tri next for tri board meeting. Good point. <coughs> um, so the next tri board meeting or by board meeting. Um, Seven. October. September. September. Just skip on a month. I know. I was going to go. Does September seventh work? We we have a regularly scheduled meeting that night. And we'd be going into the forum the week after. So. <coughs> have a have a tri board meeting immediately prior to the forum. Yeah. How do people feel about that? Okay. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, you may want some information. How about the thirty first is our next meeting? Is that too soon? Yes. Are you going the thirty first as well, Mark? Uh, I'm here the thirty first. On the 31st, you're going to be changing, closing your warrant, and so we need to be gearing the Finance Committee and the Select Board up for dealing with all the, the requests that will be on the warrant. So you'll be here anyway? So you'll be yeah. here anyway? Yeah. yeah. All right, so you want to do 6 o'clock then? Uh, have it start early? Yeah. Okay. Please. <laughs> Two in one month? Really? It's the gift that keeps on giving, Joyce. Yeah. yeah. The well's running dry. <laughs> Okay. For sure. All right. So that uh, then adjourns the tri board meeting.
And David, maybe you and I could talk about a strategy to see if we can engage the school department again. Yep. There are um, multiple meetings that they're not appearing at, and there are some critical decisions that involve them. Yes, so, indeed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, then we're going to go ahead and open the uh, regular session meeting of the select board at 7.02. And the first order of business is we do have a consent agenda. Um, there has been a change to that, so I'm just going to run down this. Um, we have the minutes from July. Jennifer? I'm sorry, the minutes from July 23rd. July 20th are not available at this time. Right, are not available at this time due to certain difficulties. Um, so that is not going to be voted um, for approval. But we do have uh, four warrant articles, um, 1705, 1657s, 1657S, and 1707. There is an election warrant for the September 8th state primary um, that the board will need to sign. Veteran Service District Intermunicipal Agreement, that's the renewal of a longstanding arrangement with the city of Northampton, correct? Um, Police department appointments. They're, they're here. We want to take that separately. Okay. Should we take that separately then? Yes, we don't care. Okay. Um, the owner's project manager agreement, uh, approval of the negotiated service agreement for the recommendation of the uh, municipal building committee. That was the negotiation that occurred mm -hmm. with Colliers. Yep. Um, Town Commons application for the 5K for Farmland and Farmers Market Festival. That's Kestrel Land Trust. They weren't able to be present this evening, uh, but again, that's something that we've done before. Uh, a one-day liquor license for top of the campus, uh, McGurk Stadium. Locations, there are multiple licenses for September 17th, October 1st, and October 29th. Um, the Sealer of Weight and Measures Agreement. That's with the city of North Northampton as well. Right. Okay. Uh, use of the Town Commons application for an on-trend craft. That's Jennifer Murphy's application for October 15th. Um, there are three individuals who have indicated an interest in being part of the Shade Tree Committee. Uh, reinvigorate that group. Um, that's Kathy Zaturka, Laura Norcott, and Yvonne Kelb. Uh, a Conservation Commission appointment also showing interest, Laura Norcott. And we're removing um, or delaying the Cultural Council appointment that's on the agenda um, at the request of the um, person requesting appointment. Okay. So. And the Pledge, Pledge of, of license, license for Liquor 44. Where did I miss that one? I have to scroll. Oh, oh I didn't scroll down far enough. Mm -hmm. And one more after that. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so, Pledge of License for Liquors 44. And then there's a uh, transient. Hawker vendor application for uh, Kim Otis for uh, Vivant Solar. Okay, it's quite the consent agenda. Yeah. So, um, with the changes indicated, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I just do the officers? Quick, yeah. just request though, Other if here. I could, um, last night at the um, uh, meeting that I attended last night was the um, Municipal, Municipal Buildings Committee. Um, um, uh, Jane uh, Nevin Smith uh, had requested that how would she go forward to be, have, begin conversations with Collier so that, that she can go forward with uh, development of whatever they're going to develop with mm -hmm. the plan for the senior center. So, do I have some direction on that that I can <coughs> respond to her with? After it's signed, um, are we going to? have them in Colliers yeah yeah I mean I think that that was a discussion with David right. Tudor as well so right I think I think they're gonna start working with the uh, municipal uh, building committee yeah or, or it's, it's your contract so either with the municipal building committee or through me whichever you de you decide yeah I, I, mean, I was kind of hoping that David Tudor as the um, okay. chair would kind of kick that off with you mm -hmm. recognizing the the priorities that were established in right the so I think it might be helpful if we tag teamed him because I'm around all the time and David Tudrin is a volunteer and very yeah. busy with his professional life mm -hmm. uh, that it might be helpful if I made the, the introductions right away mm -hmm. all right. that's fine is that fine with you it's fine with me I just want to be able to get back get to the citizen and let them know yeah. point of interest mm -hmm. uh, how does that affect uh, the library and their requests and the 
North Hadley uh, sub fire station in their request. North Hadley sub is in, is in, there. Is in there. And it's the library has their own OPM. Okay. So it doesn't so, impact the library okay, other than it. the outcome from the other projects. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So do we want to have the um, police officers come in so we can? Uh, Did we need them? <laughs> could be. Somebody. Oh, there he is. That's fine. It's fine, Chief Mason. Sergeant. Come on up, we yep, don't bite. <coughs> Much. Chief. Good evening, everybody. Um, so on the consent agenda, we have a few people that we like to hire as uh, some part-time special folks. Um, so I'll just really quickly go through it. Uh, first person you see there is Jose Cabrera. He is 21 years old. He is from Amherst, um, graduated Amherst Regional High School. He attended HCC for three years and he uh, completed the Reserve Intermittent Police Academy earlier this year. Uh, he has had a variety of uh, work experience, um, worked for the Amherst DPW for a while. He was a police cadet over at UMass, uh, and he's currently a part-time officer in Sunbelt, and he's worked several of our, uh, our road details out here. Uh, wonderful <laughs> design, uh, for us. Uh, he comes highly recommended from the officers that uh, we, uh, we spoke to and uh, made it through our selection process. Uh, to this point. Uh, next, you'll see Janelle Seitz. Janelle is 22 years old. She is from South Hadley, uh, graduated from South Hadley High School and has an associate's degree in criminal justice from Holyoke Community College. She currently works for Stop and Shop in Holyoke and she is a special police officer in South Hadley. So both of these folks have uh, a little bit of, ex come to us with a little bit of experience. Uh, one of the specials that I wanted to appoint tonight actually had a family emergency. I don't want to get too much into it, but he's a 22-year-old uh, gentleman named Dylan Bryant from Gardner. He is actually uh, a full-time officer there. He has the full-time police academy and currently works as a full-time <coughs> officer in Gardner. He's looking to relocate out in this area. He does have roots out here. Uh, he also made it through the selection process. And finally, you'll see Lauren Triggs. Uh, Lauren applied for a position with us for a, a civilian dispatcher. Uh, she is from Hadley, having graduated from Hopkins Academy, and she has an associate's degree in the arts. Uh, Lauren currently lives in Hadley and works from home. She previously worked uh, in retail and also worked for a rider truck where her, part of her responsibilities were dispatching. Uh, we feel that her familiarity with the town and having some dispatch experience will give her a, a kind of an upper hand uh, in going into our dispatch training program. Uh, all three of these folks here, including the one gentleman who's not here, um, they did complete our entire hiring process, which we, as you know, we've completely revamped and um, made it not quite so easy uh, to get through. Um, the committee that uh, interviewed all these folks was thoroughly impressed with them, and we feel that they are all promising candidates uh, to place into our field training program. So I would request that you uh, appoint the two special officers and the one gentleman who is not here as special police officers and Lauren as uh, part-time dispatcher. Okay. Does anyone like to make a motion? Based on the recommendation of Chief Mason. Can we Mason have some discussion committee? prior to motion? Do motion first and then discussion. Then discussion. Okay. okay. Based on the recommendation of Chief Mason and his committee, I'd like to make uh, the motion to accept uh, Jose Cabrera, Janelle Seitz, Dylan Bryan, and Laura Trigg to our Three to the special police department and one to the civil dispatch. Okay, is there a second? Second, though. Okay, discussion? Only thing I want to say is we have a lot of undue stress on our police department right now. On any given day, we have as many as five officers directing traffic on Route 9, and it really took a lot out of those guys on those 100 degree days. Some of them had to leave there and pull another shift at night and we certainly need the additional help. This is still another year of ongoing work. And the other positive thing is Town of Hadley isn't paying for this. It's a DOT fee. The state is paying for the police work. So, but we do need the additional help in that area for sure right now also. Okay. 
Okay, any further discussion or ready to vote? Okay, all in favor of the uh, Chief's recommendation, say aye. 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 Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay. And our sergeants. <laughs> I saw um, Andrew Morrison out in the hallway, but we did his on a consent agenda. And we, we did Kathy as well on a consent agenda. So right. So. He was just here to make sure y'all had their questions for him. He did. He's okay. So he's not waiting. No, he's not. We have a couple of seats up front. You won't be in the firing line. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Tim, do we have any additional folding chairs if more people come anywhere? Well, we do have other chairs that we can start If folding. we need them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we have a, a very full agenda this evening, um, and in light of that, typically what we would be doing is public comment right now. Um, just going to respectfully ask if there is anybody specifically here just for the public comment period. We'll try to squeeze that in at some point later in the meeting, um, but we do want to get on with um, our appointments. So I do have a little comment. I've got a gift for you, something that... Uh, I've been looking at what's happening outside to something in our building and how dirty it's getting and everything. Uh -huh. And this is something I contacted Congressman McGovern, and it's a little gift for you. For me? Yes, okay. for you. Am I opening that here on it's camera? Worth $50. It's worth it's way more than $50. Okay, all right. But you have to share it with the rest of the community. Okay, fair enough. She thinks it's diamonds, probably. Uh, I don't think so. So, Congress of the United States, please find and enclose an American flag, which has been flown over the U.S. Capitol building. That's great, from Jim McGovern's office. Yes. That's, that is fantastic. And so we absolutely maybe will be after sure. this is all done, maybe we could have a flag raising, get the high school band here and some veterans. <laughs> we'll work it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank be you, a great thing. All right, that's terrific. <laughs> Okay, um, so we have uh, three appointments this evening. We have the building inspector's goals and objectives, we have the DPW director's goals and objectives, and we have North Hadley Fire Substation. And cultural council. And, oh, excuse me, and cultural council. That's right, that's the first one right there. Um, so why don't we just start with the cultural council? That is quick. Um, so is there somebody here representing? Yeah. 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 Kind of the acting chair of the cultural council. As you probably know, we had two resignations on the Cultural Council, uh, from the Cultural Council this last month, and uh, we are in dire need of more members. And that is my primary, um, what I, I need to do more than anything else right now is to get some more members. Mm -hmm. And I'm here tonight um, to speak about a person that really wants to be on the arts, on the Cultural Council, um, but it's a special situation. It's not like clear mm -hmm. cut. Her name is Catalina Arubla. She is, has lived in Hadley for a long time, maybe 20 years. Um, she was on the Cultural Council from 2002 to 2005, and she was the chair at, some, at one point during that period. Um, she also is the creator of a great arts program called Multi Arts, which has taken place in, in Hadley for the last 16 years. And it incorporates theater, poetry, music, and art. And it's been very successful, and it's something that she's done every year, and it's definitely a heavy project. This is great. This is the good part. Now there's a gray area in that she has, she owns a house in Hadley. She also owns a house in Goshen with her parents. And she has told me that she now is a resident of Goshen. Um, and this is where the area, that's why I'm, I need to come to talk to you about this. Uh, the state of Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Cultural Council, says it's all right if you are a resident in another town, and you still can be on the Cultural Council of a certain town. Um, so that, that is fine, but I defer to you for this. I don't know what, what the regulations are in the town of Hadley for this. Um, she, it's a special situation, and she owns two houses. 
And um, I really would like to <coughs> her. So she's a committed person. She's an arts person. And she knows what's going on with the Cultural Council. And it is complicated. We're now going, everything is going to be online now. All applications are going to be online. So there's no more printing um, in, in the printing room downstairs. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it all the way it should be done. Um, but it's complicated, and it's a learning curve. So I'm just deferring to you to see what you think. I should be a really good member of the Art of the Council. We need members, and I just don't know exactly how strict you are about uh, residency in Hadley for this. As she's, I said, she's paying she's taxes. She owns a house. She owns property. Do we need to just check and see if there's any precedent? or? Well, it sounds like Susan had done some research on it. You, you have yeah, it sounds like state. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have. I know what state says, but I don't. Again, I don't. You know, I know that she owns the house and have we also mm -hmm. one in Goshen. Yeah, I just don't know if we have anything in our own right. town. There, uh, 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 there is no bylaw that would re mm -hmm. with respect to a volunteer organization such as okay. the Cultural Council. Um, there are state laws governing uh, life of service. How many times you can. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, then, then Suzanne is quite uh, correct. It does mm -hmm. not have to be a resident of the town. Okay. So ultimately, it's your choice if if this person is agreeable well, to you. She hasn't written a letter yet to you. We were no, you're looking for guidance. I was yeah. kind of waiting to see how you felt about that. We have two old things, right? <laughs> yeah. um, there could be two or three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, have no I have no problem with that yeah, at all. Problem. Well, Especially since she, she was on before. She, she is a really a committed person. She said she pays property and taxes and tells yeah, right and she's an advocate for the arts. I, I just think it would be great if she could be on the council. Volunteer thing. Donald, do you have an issue with it? No, I don't. But I'd just suggest to her to contact HPAC and let them put it on our television station that you're looking for members. I, I, if we have three new members, and I think there are, there perhaps are three new members, I don't want to have a whole raft of new members. It's so complicated, and our, our cycle is starting on, on September Oh, it's 1st. always good to have members that are interested in reserve, Yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. say they're reserve. interested, yeah, but that yeah, doesn't mean right. you have to put them all right. on yes, or right. bring them forth. Yeah, fine. Does somebody right. want to make a motion to allow I'd them? I'd like to make a motion, but I'm, God forbid I can't say the name that you said again. It is. Well, she hasn't actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Try it. She, she officially hasn't applied. <laughs> so just saying the motion is okay. just to allow. Allow it to be. So let yeah. me have a reply. I'd like to make a motion to allow. Okay, second. second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And so if she applies, and then I also have somebody else by the name of Maureen Shea. That, that is, I can say. <laughs> it's like she is a resident of Hadley, a newcomer to Hadley, but she's a dancer, and we can use a dancer on the committee. That would be just great. Um, I have her letter here. I realize you can't appoint her in, because I just got the letter yesterday. So but we can put it on a future could consent that be agenda. On the agenda as well next at the next yep. select board meeting. Yep. We'll just get it to weeks. Jennifer. Because I would literally like them before September first. And if you want, if we want to add advertise for more members, fine. But I just need you know, a core of people that really will be committed so we can start sending emails out. I'm constantly getting emails from the state. Just for my own benefit, can you explain some of your funding mechanisms? I know cultural activities have been cut drastically in the past. And what do you have available for you? I miss the old concerts on the Common, the big band series they put on. And different things, you know. And so we maybe have, we could, I'm just thinking. Oh, yeah, you want to move along, We really want to. Yeah, so but maybe okay. we could have you come Another into day. the meeting and actually Absolutely. do that. I think I it's always good I, to I'm have sorry. that. I'm sorry, that's right. I would love okay. to do that because it's really important. We have an arts community in Hadley, not sure. a big one, but we have an arts community, and I certainly want to promote it. Okay, great. So Thanks, Susan. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so I figured whichever one I put, pick, I'm going to get in trouble. So do we want to go right into North Hadley, or do we want to take care of the two gentlemen with their goals first? Tib's probably staying here for the duration. Um, I'm here for the last Are you sure? Yeah. These people here for abatements. Yeah. And, okay. Why don't we go ahead and get the abatements? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have, um, let's see, 33. Right here for abatements? Yeah. Yeah. 33 Lawrence Plain Road. We have 6 Birch Meadow Road, uh, 108 East Street, and 156 River Drive. Um, three of them due to a leak on the property, and one due to a heating system failure and burst pipes. So, um, and I believe we also have a recommendation from the water department on these abatements. 
So, David, do you want to? You were working more closely with uh, water and sewer, so. I can. I can sure, that'd be great, Jennifer. For them, although I don't have the amount. I do have the amount. I have the amount here. Okay. Um. So for the three that were leaks on the property, uh, per the water department, the water went through the meter. Then there was no problem with the meters. They are not recommending recommending abatement for any of the ones that had a leak on their property. For the one who had the um, heating uh, pipes malfunction, uh, the sewer department is recommending a partial sewer abatement on that because the water did not enter the sewer lines. So it did not have to be treated. And um, the amount was $166.37. It's what the recommendation is of the water sewer department. Okay. Um, any questions, comments, discussion on the abatement issues? Uh, Would you like to speak to them? Question. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, if you don't know if you've got a leak, I mean, this, this was five feet down in the ground inside the barn. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea until it bubbled up. Mm -hmm. And it could have been leaking for a month. I would never know it. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, do you have a meter out there? No, it's in the cellar down cellar in the house. And uh, when was the last time you, anybody ever went down and listened to the meter or look at the meter run? You know, uh, you just said, though, I just didn't have any idea that the water was running. You know, mm -hmm. so we, we've had precedent for this, right. We never yes. grant for that. You yeah. read them. With all due respect, it's just yeah. so we pumped the water and the water went to you, and we understand it was a problem that you had at your, at your property. But right. yeah. at this point in time, I'm I'm not inclined to offer abatements for those things. Okay. Okay. I'm it just opens up a can of worms for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to explain mm -hmm. what yeah. exactly we how it happened. No we idea. understand. You know, if it, if it was like a leaky toilet, well, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, but I had no idea. I, and I think we've hit, with the problems that we've had before where we haven't granted abatements, I think we tried to make the public aware that you do need to look at your water meter and realize from time to time when you pay your water bill that month and then in between, you should see what the numbers are as they're going around just in case <coughs> there's something else yeah. amiss well, with it. Well, we, we owned an apartment over in North Hampton and they called us. They had a leaky toilet. And the, and the, the girl from the water department actually called and said, there's yeah, something wrong. Right. right. You better and, go uh, over there. Yeah. So at least they were nice enough to at least call me yeah. and tell me <laughs> that you know, I'm, using, <laughs> I'm using excessive water. You know? yeah. I'm happy, don't do that. Oh, we're not, we're not I nice. think the staffing's a little different. Nice. The inference being. <laughs> <laughs> Must be that new DPW. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Here's he's good going guy. Before I got. You're, 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 you're doing a great job. I'm not kidding you. Okay, so we're going to get started. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just to let you know, we had the same dilemma. We had a major leak up on Mount Warner, and fortunately our highway superintendent come on the new one, and it was leaking for a few years, and he figured it out. We're talking hundreds of thousands of gallons, mm -hmm. and now we're saving our water and everything, but it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It happens yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Did you have a question about the abatement? I wanted to make a comment the question, and that we really got down to five times what we would normally be charged for our our water and sewer bill, and we were really devastated in dealing with my mom and her home. And just, you know, haven't, didn't pay attention. But the bigger problem was it was a silent leak and we didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. The fact that we only get billed twice a year makes the problem bigger. Because mm -hmm. how, how, you know, if we were billed, say, four times a year, at least if something like this happened, we didn't know enough, we didn't know mm -hmm. about looking at the meter. This is all new to us. We just took over taking care of the house because my mom's been in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
twice a year. I mean, you, you can really get into a lot. Of, I know now we need to pay attention. I actually had the guy from the water department come and look at our meter, make sure things were still not, we got a new toilet, it wasn't leaking, it seems to be moving normally. But it's, it's a real hardship for us to get hit with a bill five times what it would normally be. It's more than our house taxes, you know? And it, it should, is there any thought to at least billing more frequently? At least you, would, you wouldn't get nailed so badly and you'd have, you know, more of a, Marlo, do you have any comment on that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, as soon as we get done changing out the rest of the meters, which has been an ongoing program since long before I came aboard, which we're getting close. I think we're within a year, I think, to look at the capital. I don't have it here. But once we get all the new meters in place, the radio reads, the intent is to, well, my intent is to highly recommend we go to quarterly billing. Mm -hmm. uh, it resolves a lot of homeowner issues. It resolves, uh, it stabilizes the revenue coming in on the other end. It's more uh, new. Stable, I guess. Better for budgeting, yeah. Uh, budgeting purposes. Um, there's many reasons, but as soon as we get that done, I'd like to get it done a little sooner than what we're calling for. I'm taking a look at that, too. So. Mm -hmm. There's a cost of billing, too, and we need to weigh that as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But yeah, points well taken. Right, and yeah. I guess I misunderstood. I, I, because it was a silent leak, we weren't aware of it. I, I was under the understanding that nothing would be done on the water side, but perhaps there would be some forgiveness on the sewer side, but apparently that's not the case. Wait a minute, that was the recommendation. Let's go back to that then, because I, I am in support of that. Because the Are you DPW walking? was yeah, supportive of that. East Street. That um, was East Street. That was Our water bill was $2,100. It's normally 400 this time of year. Okay, right. so Devastated. let's go to that. Let, let's understand this one. So the, the water department and the sewer department stated that the water passed through their meter and then since it was a leak that went into the toilet, but it leaked into the toilet back in, then we had to process that water again. So we paid on both ends. The town has paid on both ends. We paid as the water. Am I saying this right? Was it out of the toilet? Not it leaked out on the floor? No. It was, we never, we didn't know. But that's what I'm saying. If the water was in the system and it stayed in the system, it came through your meter on your side of the house, it went back out on the sewer side of your house, then the water passed through your house and the town of Hadley has to pay to pump the water in and treat the water again through the sewer. I'm right. assuming red is the one that, that that was that the town was recommending that the sewer not be charged because his, his was in a barn. Is yeah. it yeah. 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 Okay, right, right, right. The, the pipe burst is the one that they okay. are recommending yeah. the abatement on the sewer only. Right. Because the that sewer water burst not. in the house, it did not go back into our sewer system. Thank right. You. That's the only one. But the other three, the sewer department clearly says that the water passed through. Okay. So, there, so must have been, there must have been something going on there because in 2015 you had a high, medium high bill, 700. Then it dropped to four. Then it went up to That's seven. That's for us. One, one time a year it's summer. 700 for the summer, right. oh, okay. and then for the winter it's 400. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it's always been. That's yeah. why mm -hmm. we were so dumbfounded and, and really upset when we saw this bill because it was so far mm -hmm. out of whack. Yeah. But sorry again, it's you know we're try to stay true to the um, the way that other situations have been handled so okay all right okay. John you gotta want to keep this moving along yeah I get, I get a, a just a recommendation that when you send out the water bills put a note in there to check let them check the meters they can check mm -hmm. if the meters turning mm -hmm. and all the water shut off they know they got a leak that's very right. simple that's what I said. Yeah. there's a sensor in it isn't it yeah. Well, there's a little dial. Yeah. You can see it going around. Okay. Right.